place to build a house. He did build, besides the bridges that are still standing, he built one other thing that's still around, and that was a pyramid-shaped tomb, or also called a mausoleum. Anybody know what a mausoleum is? It's a place where you store dead people. Yeah. Parker Whitney's inside that building. He's inside that, that pyramid, and I took that picture myself. You can go to the pyramid. My boys have gone there and played around it. It was, it was, it's built in a place he called the fort. There's rocks all around it, and his kids used to play down there. And then when his kids got old enough and they didn't play down there anymore, he built this crazy 15-foot tall granite pyramid tomb. And he's inside there with a bunch of other Whitney's are buried in there. They have a meeting every year. They have a, they have a family get-together every year. It's the last acre owned by the Whitney family of 20,000 acres. They sold off Spring Valley Ranch almost entirely. And that's the last acre that's, that's still there. That's that, where that tomb sits. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. My second book, the one I'm writing right now, the sequel to the first one, it starts in that tomb. Somebody's broken into it. Dun, dun, dun. Spoiler alert. Characters. Let's talk about characters. The boys, the three boys. Like I said, that one was easy. Right? Three brothers who secretly fight crime. Well, I have three boys. They don't secretly fight crime as far as I know. I hope they don't anyway. Old Man Barton, their great-great-grandfather in the book was Old Man Barton, Charlie Barton. And he built that house, and he was a combination of Rucola and Whitney. He came to Rockland, and he started both a granite mine and a cattle ranch. Whitney was a sheep rancher, so I changed the animal because cattle are cooler than sheep. But uh, he was a combination of both of them. When you get your inspiration for something or someone... You don't have to use just one person, you know. You can take combinations of the things you like or the things you think that are really cool about somebody and combine them to make one really cool character. That's what I did with Grandpa Jack. Grandpa Jack is a combination of a lot of people that I'm related to. I come from a long line of crazy people. And I combined quite a few of them to make Grandpa Jack. Like I said, Grandpa Jack in the book is not all there. He lets these kids do some pretty dangerous stuff. Okay. Two people that go into Grandpa Jack I want to tell you about today. These are people that I'm directly related to. My great uncle Brad and his B-24 Liberator. See that plane? That's a plane from World War II. The B-24 Liberator. There's a 110 foot wingspan. This building is 100 feet long. Wall to wall. 100 feet long, so the wings would stick out 5 feet on either side if we tried to fit that plane in this building. It's 66 feet long, has a crew of 10 guys who likes cars in here. Who's the car guy in here, or girl? Okay. Those engines, there's four Pratt and, Whit Pratt and Whitney radial engines on there. 1,200 horsepower apiece for you car guys. For you non-car people, a really fast car is like three or 400 horsepower zone. Each one of these engines is 1,200 horsepower. So four really fast cars per engine. Now, my great uncle Brad flew that plane with his 10-man crew from Colorado all the way to Europe to fight in World War II. And when he left Colorado, they gave him the plane, and they gave him his crew, and they had to fly to Kansas. And then they had to go across the ocean. 